Right, so those who have also come to witness uh, these sessions right here at uh, the East African Legislative Assembly include Senator Murkomen, who's joining me right now. Senator Murkomen, thank you so much for accepting to talk to us thank on you. KTN. So far, we've witnessed the swearing in of uh, all the East African Legislative Assembly members, including those from Kenya. I suppose you came to support, uh, give them moral support or, or, or of sort. But there is a stalemate as we speak right now as far as the issue of, uh, you know, the election of the speaker is concerned. Talk to me, but first of all, from your position as a lawyer and then also as someone who's come to also observe what happens here. What is your take on this? Well, um, you see, communities are built not... Um, this is a diplomatic parliament. It's not like the national parliament. And so a lot of what should be happening here is not about, uh, you know, using technicalities. Communities succeed because of goodwill. And we came here with the goodwill. Uh, Kenya had uh, derailed the process because of the election of its membership. We came here, we were invited to be part of the guests for inauguration. And it's unfortunate that technicalities are being now uh, implored or used by um, some of the member countries to frustrate the election of the speaker because there is already a gentleman or, gent uh, or, uh, or, or ladies agreement that uh, since uh, Tanzania was the first, followed by Kenya, Uganda, it should move to Rwanda, then Burundi. That alone was already a diplomatic sort of agreement, which is beyond just the stickling to the rules. Now, it's unfortunate that that moved now to a stage where you have um, uh, a situation where Tanzania, before its time comes, is again offering their uh, uh, candidature. Burundi have a right to offer their candidature because their time has not come, but unfortunately using quorum to frustrate the whole election might uh, uh, put, uh, create a situation where for the next you know, five years you will never have the, 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 the assembly constituted. This again takes back issues to the principals, the presidents of the countries to intervene in a situation that was so small that never required use of such amount of energy. Um, unfortunately, I don't also believe that that rule applies at the moment because a rule of quorum only applies when you have a speaker presiding over the house. They haven't elected the speaker yet. The rule that applies to the speaker is in the treaty itself. In the rules itself provide that on the first instance, a speaker must attain two-thirds. If it doesn't attain two-thirds, you come for simple majority. So already there is an elaborate mechanism for electing the, uh, the, the speaker. They should have elected the speaker, then now deal with quorum issues when you are dealing with a motion. Because quorum all over the world is used to frustrate. You want to ensure that a particular business does not succeed. Yeah? Yes. Because you can uh, create an environment that that business doesn't succeed. So that when a new business in the order paper is put in place, you can come and prosecute that business. But you cannot frustrate the house being there because it has to be there first, then you can frustrate businesses using quorum. So I think um, the clerk should guide the house uh, accordingly, allow the election of the speaker, then in future when a member wants to frustrate the business of the house using quorum, they can go ahead with it. But the overall uh, spirit of uh, uh, formation of community should prevail in this situation, and I hope Burundi and Tanzania will find it in their uh, uh, um, find it in their thinking that it will be necessary uh, for them to come to the house so that the house can proceed. One, uh, one last question uh, before I let you go. You know, f speaking on issues of numbers, you know, you come from a party which yeah. also usually talks about the numbers in parliament and, and, and therefore there's an importance in numbers. But also you talk of the issue of the cycle going on and on and oh, on. Yes. I, I mean, coming from a situation which practically affected Kenya in one way or another, which also actually spilled over to affect the Iala business. What sort of advice would you be giving if, if, if they were to ask you for advice as far as this issue of going back to the same process again and again is concerned? I, I don't want to be ruthless uh, like we are at the national level. Because really, if it was about numbers, the majority was still in the House, they should have elected the Speaker and proceed. But I, my advice is that grandstanding, yeah, chest thumping, um, um, brickmanship will not assist our East African community. We were looking, 
the reason why this community was reconstituted was to ensure that the people can integrate and business can proceed within the three countries. Movement of persons, movement of goods. These are more important issues than a few members engaging in a process of grandstanding. And really, my advice would be that uh, look at the bigger picture, look at the well-being of the people of East Africa community, not, you know, not the position of one speaker, one the position of one country, because we are in a situation of give and take. Right. Final question, Murkomen. It seems that national politics is slowly sliding into the regional politics. I mean, let's face it, we seem to be seeing a scenario whereby, you know, heads of state are having an interest in who becomes speaker, and even coalitions are being formed, you know, on which candidate to be backed by which particular country. Is this a dangerous situation or is it something that you'd perceive as normal as far as you know regional integration is concerned? No, that's normal. Uh, interest of a one country, you know, this is a place where interests are merged together, they are concocted, they are uh, uh, silted, they are desilted, you know, this is the right place. The only thing is that while doing so, unnecessary technical frustrations will inhibit that environment for one to come and converse their interests. I would never have a problem with the situation where three, four countries gang up and they change their rules and elect a person from different areas because that's what ought to be. But at the end of the day, uh, there must be um, good faith and must be, you know, a, a gentleman agreement must or a ladies' agreement must actually be implemented so that you can keep the, the team work, working together. The only problem I have here is that when you use technical procedures to frustrate a whole community, that will really be unfortunate. Thank you so much, Senator Murkomen, for your time. All right, uh, and of course, we're also joined by uh, another member from Kenya who is here also. You are just sworn in today. Congratulations you. uh, upon your swearing in. First of all, I want you to tell us uh, so far what you've been able to see uh, from the start of the processes to where we are today. Thank you very much. My name is uh, Honorable Abdikadir Aden, member of the uh, Yala from the Kenya chapter. We have just been sworn in um, and we are very happy to see the very large support from the Kenya. Uh, we've got a very big delegation that you've seen uh, the leader of majority of the uh, uh, Senate is with us. Uh, speak of the Senate is with us. Many uh, dignitaries from Kenya and our families as well. And we thank them and thank the people of Kenya very much for the opportunity to serve them. Uh, what I have observed so far is that uh, other than the swearing in which went on smoothly, there is already, we are already in the deep end of uh, the regional politics which is at play. We are supposed to transact the first agenda of the House, which is uh, election of the Speaker. But unfortunately, two member states who also had interest in that uh, have decided to cripple the, uh, the process of the Assembly by walking out. Unfortunately, we have rules which were there in place which says if any, if any one member state is absent from the uh, proceedings, then uh, it cannot continue. And that's the stage where we are now. The clerk has given us the opportunity to now take a break and uh, consult, and that's what you see us doing here very much, so that we can be able to persuade those member states to understand and respect the rule of fast rotation, right. whereby uh, Kenya has had its time, Tanzania has had its time, so Uganda. did Uganda. Yes. Yes. It is now the time for the other member states to have their turn, which is Rwanda, Burundi, and uh, South Sudan. But still, the rules does not, uh, you know, uh, disallow them not to participate. So they have offered themselves. It is a process of democracy, in the spirit of democracy. Um, we are now in the process of now engaging our colleagues from the countries of Tanzania and Rwanda Burundi. and Burundi uh, to, to come back to the table or to come back to the House so that we can be able to have a democratic election on the speaker. Right. Did you foresee this? Did you see this coming? Because there are those who had already seen the signs and the cracks on the wall. Some saying that how come Tanzania is back on the list, yet they already had their fair share of this particular seat. Already, you know, seeing the uh, lobbying and mobilizing of individual member states to back a specific candidate from a different country. Did you see this coming as members? Not at all. Uh, I think uh, we first were approached by uh, our colleagues from Tanzania and Burundi on Saturday when we arrived here. And uh, like any other candidate, like the candidate from uh, Rwanda, 
they all persuaded us and we have the vote which is a secret ballot right. up to now nobody knows where my vote will go right. will it go to rwanda will it go to burundi right. or tanzania nobody knows right. and for that reason uh, we did not anticipate this kind of uh, thing coming we all expected like we did as kenyans uh, that everybody will come in good faith knowing that we will go into the process of elections and and vote and elect the speaker that we want the rule is quiet on whether a member state that has served before can come back and apply again and that's the position that our colleagues from uh, Tanzania are using now saying that you know no rule stops us from vying even if we had a chance before and uh, I just want to answer to your question is that we did not expect um, ill intentions from anybody uh, to, to, to pull a certain unexpected moves we expected a smooth uh, democratic process thank you so much for your time and of course we're hoping to continue following up on the processes thank that you. are going on right thank here you very much. all right asante right. sana for your time thank you indeed and of course uh, we we are also joined by another member from kenya just definitely also congratulations thank upon you. being sworn in as a member of the east africa legislative assembly i'm sure that this is your first time is it uh, not first time in this assembly right. because I'm a former member in Kenya and right. I was a member of regional integration. Right. So I've come here two, three times. So you're an old timer and of course it's important <laughs> to hear from you. What do you f see or say or read from what is going on right now? Uh, this is geopolitics and I would call it uh, unfortunate but personally as a politician I had foreseen this because the rules speak of rotational on the speaker seat and already the two countries had shown interest and them having shown interest, then they had to fight to the highest level possible. Mm -hmm. But having said that, as we have been sworn in, I would say we use persuasion, mm -hmm. we persuade Burundi, mm -hmm. we persuade Tanzania, they go back to the house, right. because democratically you cannot fight when you're outside. Right. We don't know the grievances. They need to come to the house, speak out, we listen to them, then we make a judgment. Right. But, but, but then, what now is the worst case scenario? If Tanzania, if Burundi say that we are not coming in, what, what happens? That is terrible because then we are not going to have any business. For instance, we can move a motion now based on uh, rule number 30D, which speaks that we can suspend any rule and we can suspend rule number 12 of the quorum. But now we can't do that because that's the second business. Mm. Because the rules of the House say the Speaker's election is the first business. So it is worse if they don't come back to the House because it seems we have been sworn in and we shall just be paid and not work. Do you think based on that last line you made we shall be paid but not work doesn't this rubber stamp the feeling of the common monanchi that this east african legislative assembly members are not out there for our interests uh, they are just out there to earn the monies and do nothing for us it is not everyone who want to earn money on the contrary and on the contrary kenyans have come here to work in fact this being the fourth assembly we thought it would make a difference from all the other assemblies that have been in this place. Right. So it is not every member who wants to be paid. But we can also tell the community that those who don't want to argue their case in the House, democratically, then they want to be paid. Right. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. You. Asante Sana. Of course, uh, we're also joined by yet another Moshimiwa. Asante Sana for joining us. You'll just quickly tell us your name and the country you represent right here in Iyala, and then we can continue from there. My name is Adad Mohamed Noor. Uh, I represent Kenyan chapter and uh, I'm really very grateful for the people of Kenya to give me this opportunity and the privilege to serve Kenya in this capacity after serving Kenyan parliamentarian for the last 25 years. It's a privilege for me to be here. Right. So what's your advice on what is going on so far and what is your expectation moving forward? Surely any, any institution must be guided by rules and uh, regulations. And if we only were there to the rules and regulations are set up in our chapter, then we would have not have any problems. It's only the greed that has put us into these problems, because uh, that our chapter says this speakership must be on a rotational basis, and the practice has been the same. It has never changed. It's a circumstance that we have just found ourselves in today, and it's a very unfortunate one. And uh, at our level, we still see that we can be able to negotiate and maybe convince our brothers that this in reach a consensus that we can be able to move on and, and adhere to the, the, the rules of, uh, of the game. All right. Asante Sana, that is something we're looking forward to seeing happen. Asante Sana for your time. Th yeah. 
Asante sir. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> right, thank you. I'm also told that we have an outgoing member, Peter. Thank you so much, Mwishmiwa, for joining us. Yeah. You are actually an outgoing member of IALA. Yes. Y when you see this, yeah. does it ring a bell? Does it make you feel like, hmm, this is kawaida? These are things we were used to, or is this something new for you? Thank you. My name is uh, Peter Mathuki, outgoing member of the East African uh, Legislative Assembly. And I was the chair of the committee that is dealing with the procedures of this house. Yes. And uh, of course, first I want to welcome the for the assembly. And of course, uh, let them know that the expectations are very high from the citizens, as particularly now that they were very late to start, and therefore they should eat the ground running. Of course, the issue at hand now is the election of the speakership. And uh, now this is uh, geopolitics at play. Of course, you have seen uh, uh, Burundi and uh, Tanzania walk out of the assembly uh, to protest, of course, to say that they, are, they don't want the election of a speaker from Rwanda. Mm. But uh, this is my advice. When you look at the first speaker of the assembly, the first Yala was from Tanzania. Mm -hmm. The second one was from Kenya. The third one was from Uganda. Yeah. So obviously in the, in, the, in the principal rotation, this ought to have gone to Rwanda. And therefore, there is no way Burundi would have become a speaker since the current Secretary General is also coming from Burundi. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the role of a assembly is to oversee the executive. Mm -hmm. So when you have a speaker from the same country and the such a general is from the same country, there will be issues of conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. And that is why, obviously, it is only fair that the speakership comes from a, a partner state than the one that they've given the Secretary General. Right. So I would uh, plea with the partner state of Burundi to really join in uh, bringing normalcy in this matter. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's unfortunate that Tanzania is also joined uh, itself in this. Mm -hmm. And yet Tanzania is one of the hottest found members of this community with Kenya and Uganda. Mm -hmm. And they are expected to provide leadership. And it's my hope and prayer that uh, Tanzania will, of course, uh, try to be on top of things to ensure that, of course, now they don't play. But I think the best way forward as it is now, mm -hmm. members have been sworn in. So we have an assembly constituted. Mm -hmm. The issue of election of a speaker can be possibly be possibly cons uh, suspended for, for a while so that the partner states at a different level of the Council of Ministers and the heads of states could do some consultations on uh, this issue. Because you have seen a memorandum that has been written by Burundi yeah. feeling that they are supposed to be actually their turn to become a speaker. Mm -hmm. So what the issues raised there, obviously they tell you that uh, uh, there are bigger issues to be sorted out. Mm -hmm. I was spoken to the candidate from uh, Burundi who wants to become the speaker mm -hmm. and she has told me that she is instructed to stand. And I know her. Mm -hmm. And I asked her what is the problem? She said I have instructions to stand. Mm. And if I don't stand in this, mm. I, will have, I have no place to go mm. in Burundi. Mm. And you can see clearly, it's not about the members themselves, it is instructions they are getting from their partner states. Mm.